Gothen Dian Airslinger, and welcome back to another tournament recap. We had another super fun open Great League tournament at our local comic store here, uh, Prime Comics. The owners are amazing. They put up the best prizes. This week they put up three professionally graded uh, Pokemon cards and or Cardasu, the uh, old Bandai vending machine cards from the 90s. Uh, of choice to the winner. So we are going to walk through my tournament run here, starting with my team. We're a little bit safe and a little bit spicy, which is a nice comfortable place to be. So I brought my time-honored classics of my Altaria, my Azumarill, my Sableye. Um, I love Sableye and I love Azumarill. They're both very good safe swaps, good bulk. I love Altaria. Uh, as a very, very strong lead, good damage, good bulk. I mean, these are top competitors for no question. Uh, Metacham obviously is a top performer as well, but I was running this time Power Up Punch Psychic. I don't like Ice Punch on my Metacham. I understand why. There's a lot of Noctowls out there and a lot of Trevenants out there. So it's definitely a very viable and strong pick. I love Power Up Punch because I like being able to swap in to stun fisk and registeel and a power up punch will let me farm them down not need to shield and have a psychic ready that's boosted with whatever comes in next um so i just really like how power up punch plays also i was expecting more umbreons and power up punch just puts me in a nice safer spot there with it then we've got our two spice picks here uh, we have gliscor and my favorite lurantis so Gliscor obviously got a great buff with the wing attack update that came through the Knocked Owl stole all the spotlight for. Uh, but Gliscor is a really strong Pokemon. Wing attack means it's got great energy generation. Wing attack is stab um, because Gliscor is ground type. Uh, he is safer against Spark Lanterns and Surf isn't a super damaging move so he can handle that better. And Earthquake, he can get to quick enough to threaten your Lanterns as well as to threaten both of the Steel types. And then he's got Night Slash in case we have any Psychic types showing up, namely Defense Deoxys was my number one concern, but also he can deal out a lot of damage to the Ghosts that show up, especially Trevenant. And then finally, Lurantis is a unique pick. Um... Lurantis, it's a mono grass type, which is helpful, hurtful, depending on how you're using it. The biggest danger Lurantis has is that it also gets very hard walled by Noctowl. Uh, Fury Cutter does no damage, Leaf Blade does no damage to Noctowl, and Superpower technically does neutral damage because it's a normal flying. Um, so it can still do some chunks to Knocked Owl, but it's it's a pretty hard matchup all in all considered. Uh, but I like Lurantis because Lurantis is a good core breaker for what I saw a lot of in our previous tournaments, which is Umbreon Azumarill. I like Fury Cutter for fast energy generation plus that extra damage against your Umbreon Dark types. I like Leaf Blade because it's an amazingly energy efficient move. It's the best grass move in the game in my opinion. Um, so it really lets it threaten Azumarill, and Superpower lets it hard threaten the Steels, as well as the Dark types. So it's got very powerful moves. The problem is Lurantis is a little bit glassy. Thankfully, Lurantis is able to get to its charge moves pretty quickly, which means that even if you're soaking a shot or two, if they're resisted, you're still going to get a, able to get off enough damage that Lurantis will do its role fine. Um, but Lurantis and Gliscor are definitely the glassiest of my mods, and that's usually where spice picks end up being, uh, because if something is super bulky, it very rarely is not top meta choice. Uh, so this is the team I brought in to our tournament. I'm going to highlight uh, an early match and then my final two matches against some great trainers, some great battles. So our first opponent here... Uh, Eyeless Jack uh, was featuring, he's a new battler, this is his first tournament, and we love when we have new players because PvP um, only thrives when we keep having uh, new people get excited and join in. So I always love seeing new players, encouraging them and helping them out. He is running Blastoise, Pidgeot, Seedra, Hitmon, uh, Chan, Flareon, and regular Stunfisk, uh, Unova Stunfisk. And so he's got some really interesting mons, uh, I've experienced most of them thankfully through my Sylph tournaments. I 
didn't remember what Siege was running, so that's kind of something I need to be concerned about. I recall it having very high charge moves at the time. I've looked them up since, and yes, everything it has takes basically 22 Dragon Breaths to get to. That's why I've never found a place for a Siege on my team. Um, but looking over these teams, um, I can see that I do, they don't have any Steel types, so I don't have to worry too much about that. I see double water as well as a ground type. So Lorantis looks very strong because it's also an okay matchup against Hitmonchan depending on what punches they're running and if I get an energy lead. So I like Lorantis in this matchup. Flareon isn't a particularly strong Pokemon. It's just a standard evolution. So, you know, people have them around. Pidgeot, if it's running, Wing Attack, um, Brave Bird, Feather Dance could be a real nuisance. So I need to make sure I've always got some air coverage. But I can beat Pidgeot with Azumarill, I can beat Pidgeot with Altaria, so I want to make sure I always bring at least one of those. And as always, Sableye feels relatively strong against everything not named Pidgeot here. So going into this fight, I see Altaria looks very safe against basically everything. Seedra is going to be the worst because I take super effective from its Dragon Breaths, whereas it doesn't from mine. But Altaria's got enough bulk and the Dragon Blast aren't stab. I think I'll be okay with that anyways. So I'm going to lead Altaria to play it safe and then go from there. So we can see Seedra lead. It's not a great lead because this is the only thing that does super effective to my Seedra. But you can see I've got more bulk and I know I'm going to outpace him to a move. So I throw the Sky Attack after I pace there. Get a shield. I'm falling down, so I swap into a Zoomerill. I can absorb anything thrown at me from Seedra at this stage of the game. All right, it's an Aurora Beam, so I know I'm safe. I can over farm here, so I let him get to a second move because I'm not worried about it to make sure I've got enough to blast whatever comes in next. Because it's obviously going to take a bit for uh, me to get there with Bubble. So I throw the Ice Beam because I don't want to waste to play rough energy. And whatever comes in next, I know I'm going to be able to get big enough. It's a Pidgeot. Ice Beam is great. I'm up a shield. I'm up energy. We should be fine here. Um, we see that this is Steel Wing, um, which means that I don't have to worry much about Pidgeot anymore with my lineup. So he's out of shields. I get two Ice Beams off. That technically does more damage, but I'm not really worried about it. Whatever this is, I know Altaria I can shield, even if it's a Feather Dance, just to play it safe with all that energy. I assumed it was big. It turned out to be a Hurricane. And then Hitmonchan comes in with no shields against the Sky Attack. Game one, easy win. Um... I don't even show Sableye. So preparing for game two, I just think the same game plan is probably going to work. Uh, he leads Blastoise. I know Blastoise can have Ice Beam, so I need to make sure that I don't lose my Altaria since it just matches up so well in everything. Um, I farm it to where I think he's going to throw the Ice Beam, throw the Sky Attack, and let him keep going. Since he doesn't throw the Ice Beam, I, I'm not sure what it's on. Again, new player. Turns out to be a Hydro Pump which is fine. I shield it. I leave with a just 33% health Altaria uh, and an energy lead from that. Regular Stun Fist comes in. It's Mud Shot, so it does zero damage with fast moves. Discharge is neutral because I'm a Dragon type. I know I can take one, so I can punch my way through and then not lose the switch by letting the Altaria eventually go down while just chipping so much damage in here because he's got to throw Discharges to knock me out. So at this stage, I bring in Sableye just because I know it can take a Discharge or a Mud Bomb, no problem. And so I have plenty of health and tons and tons of energy for whatever's in the back. Next comes in the Flareon, and I just blast it with a return. Um, Flareon doesn't have a lot of stats, so it explodes. Another another solid win. Uh, but I do really like the Stun Fist coming in there from him. Um, Stun Fist is a really good, flexible Pokemon and pretty safe. I lead Gliscor here because I want to see how it plays out. I want to get a better feel for it. Against Steel Wing Pidgeot, it's not a great matchup. Um, just because I throw nothing... Earthquake is resisted by Pidgeot and Night Slash isn't a great move. But I don't want to lose Switch Advantage... And I know that Sableye will be fine to handle this in the back. So, and I know I'm going to generate a lot more energy. So I know I will outpace the shields. I've already gotten both shields here. Drop the Night Slash with an energy lead and a shield. I I'm going to be fine with whatever comes in next. So he brings in the Blastoise. I throw the Earthquake because the Water Gun will get to me. I can't over-generate energy here. And then bring in Lorantis because I know it's super great. 
Um, I farm up extra energy because I know he's got Hydro Pump on it, kill it, and then whatever comes in next, it's a Hitmonchan. It's not going to get to a Fire Punch before I Leaf Blade it to Oblivion. So I've got a shield up. I just let the Lorantis go. It's a Thunder Punch, which means I live and I get to the Leaf Blade. Easy win. Um, but again, brand new player. I always love seeing new players. I love the spice they bring, the interesting picks, the favorite Pokemons that come out. I was surprised uh, with the performance of Seedra. I wish it had some cheaper moves that would really help it, I think. Um, otherwise, I love monotypes that aren't Dragon using Dragon Breath. And I really do love Unova Stunfisk. I just think it's uh, a Mon that, because it loses to Galarian Stunfisk, uh, it doesn't see nearly as much play, but I really like a uh, ground electric type. I just I just think he's really fun, and so seeing him was great. All right, so we're going to skip ahead. We're playing against uh, Pete Pikachu 3K here. And as you can see, he brought Registeel, Metacham, Umbreon, Azumarill, Noctowl, Galarian, Stunfisk. We've got a Double Steel Show 6. We've got tons and tons and tons of bulk. Um, so as I look at this team... I see Altaria's not great, because we've got hard counters with Azumarill, Registeel, and Galarian Stunfisk. We have a potential counter, depending on how it plays out, with Umbreon. And Metacham with Ice Punch can definitely get damage in. And Noctowl is not a dominant win, so Altaria doesn't look good. Azumarill's great, because I know... I'm confident in the IVs of my Azumarill to win the Mirror. It will win the Metacham matchup, it will win the Noctowl, and it will win the Umbreon. So Azumarill looks really, really good. Sableye doesn't look as good because I've got an Umbreon and an Azumarill to deal with there, but because it's likely he's always going to bring a Steel, Stabilize still feels fairly decent. Gliscor looks like it could be really strong here against the either of the Steels or Metacham, as long as I've got Shields to deal with Ice Punch, and okay against Umbreon. And then Regist or Metacham also looks really good here because it beats both of the Steels. Uh, it will potentially win with Bates the mirror matchup because I've got I know I've got Psychic and if I can land a power up punch first I'll win it and it's got a strong Umbreon and it can flip the Azumarill because of how strong Psychic is. So those are my thoughts going into match one uh, and one of the interesting parts about this is that as moves get revealed in this I'm going to change my game plan. So I lead Lorantis hoping to catch something fun. I catch Azumarill lead which is great for Lorantis. I'm going to outpace it to charge moves and I'm going to do super effective damage. So I overcharge before he gets to Ice Beam. I shield because I, I it's going to be an Ice Beam, but it's a play rough, which tells me that he's not running Ice Beam, or he's trying to hide it, but I assume he's running Hydro Pump now. And knowing he doesn't have Ice Beam changes things. Since I've got so much energy on Lorantis, I throw the superpower. You can see it does almost 50% of Noctowl, which makes this a much better matchup because Gliscor doesn't have a good Noctowl matchup. Um, because Night Slash is not Stab, um, it's not super effective. I get to him quick enough, but they don't have a lot of closing power and Earthquake's bad. But I don't like Gliscor against Azumarill, so I know if I bring it out now, it at least is going to be okay. I go down two shields because I fall for the bait, the bait being I got the buff, but it's good enough, I get through Noctowl, and I have the energy to throw an Earthquake, which forces the shield. I immediately swing into Lorantis, because I know I've got energy, to throw the Leaf Blade, because it's neutral against him, which is good enough. If he throws the Rock Slide or the Earthquake here, um, I live the Earthquake. He brings in Azumarill. That's fine. Lorantis handles both of them well. I throw the Leaf Blade, kill it, and then he comes back in. I almost got to a superpower, which would have been glorious there. But I know Sableye doesn't go down to one Earthquake at this stage, so I'll have more than enough HP to get to the foul play and close out this first match. Um, but now, knowing that there's no Ice Beam on Azumarill, I feel much safer to bring in Lorantis, and I feel safer to bring in um, Altaria. It also means that my Azumarill is going to be in a much better spot in the Mirror matchups, because I can bait if I need to with the play rough. It also means Gliscor is less good because a Hydro Pump, um, if it hits, is going to blow me up. Ice Beam's not good either, but Ice Beam's not stabbed, so I can at least lift one. So going into game two, I lead Umbreon because I'm less worried about the Azumarill at this stage of the game. Or I lead Altaria. He leads Umbreon, and this is a fine matchup. It can flip, um, but generally speaking, Altaria wins this um, as long as it can land a Moonblast. So I charge up, I assume they're trying to play it safe with Umbreon, so I just throw the Moonblast because I don't expect them to shield it. And at this stage, I'm good. 
Um, they swap in to catch my Sky Attack, which was a great catch. It lands on Registeel, which is awful for me, but I just bring in Sableye. Um, Shadow Claws do great damage, Lock On does no damage. Foul Play is neutral damage, so that's fine after landing the Sky Attack. I'm going to block the first charge move because I want to keep him nice, whole, and healthy if he doesn't invest the shields. Um, so I throw this. He can either get the shield to try and force uh, hitting me, which he does, but I know I'm going to live either a Zap Cannon or a Focus Blast here. So he throws the Focus Blast because he's worried about being farmed down, and I've got a healthy enough Sableye that I can do something. Umbreon comes in. He throws the Psychic, probably just a misclick, and then swaps out, and then we get the Metacham in. Um, I didn't notice this while we were playing, but if you'll notice, his Metacham's not fully powered up. It's a 1439. Um, had I known this, I probably would have leaned more on my Metacham, knowing that I'm going to win all of those mirror matchups as well. Um, but at the time, I wasn't paying attention to the CP of his Pokemon, so I didn't even notice that. But in the zero shield matchup here, I've got or I've got one shield, an Azumarill versus a near-dead Umbreon and a Metacham. I'm, I'm, we're golden at this stage. I'm very comfortable and know I don't have any dangers. I shield this just because you never want to risk it. Um, but we win nice, handy. And then going into game three, um, I want to play a little more dangerous line. Once I've won a round, so once if I win the first two matches, I like to play more dangerous lines in game three just so I can get practice for uncommon situations. Uh, because it helps me, if I ever find myself really in a difficult situation, to have more experience in that. Um, so I'm going to try and pivot here a little bit, play a little more um, hard guess line to see if I can force in an interesting situation. Or if I fail, see how I can try and recover from it. So that's my game plan going into game three, knowing that I've already run the map. So I lead Metacham, assuming he may go a steal or number on lead. It's a knockdown and I don't have Ice Punch. This is a terrible uh, load for me. So I safe swap into Sableye after generating a lot of energy. I know I deal no damage against Noctowl. Um, he catches the foul play, which would do neutral damage to him on the Azumarill, which is wasted energy for this stage of the game for Sableye. But I see that my energy is high enough that I can definitely get to a return and force the shield before he can bubble me down. He doesn't shield, and now Azumarill, which is my biggest threat because it just walls uh, my Metasham fairly strongly, um, means that he, he also loses the swap. Knocked Owl comes in, and I get to control that Azumarill meets up with him, thanks to the longevity of my Sableye there. And since I know I have Azumarill locked into Knocked Owl, I'm good to go. He brings in Registeel as the final one, and I my pivot successfully put my fighter against his Steel type. And Power Up Punch Metacham loves Registeel. I can eat the first Zap Cannon or Focus Blast, no problem. I don't get the debuff, which is even better, and I charge up to a Psychic because I either force the shield or I win. This is a double buffed Psychic. He doesn't shield because he knows there's a zoom roll in the back, and it blows him up. Um, so we win that round handily. We have a nice recovery by saving the Sableye. I either can get shield advantage or switch advantage. Um, because he gave me switch advantage by dropping the Azumarill with the return, it allowed me to get the Metacham in a much better alignment, an alignment that definitely won me that match. Uh, so again, hard gambling on a Metacham lead didn't pay off, but I was able to pivot and uh, gain it back with Sableye even into a bad matchup. So now we enter the third, or the, the third match we're going to look at here, the final against G.I. Joe 33, who's a great battler. Um, we tied in the last tournament, and so we are here um, in the grand finals to win this. He is running what I like to call the bulkiest of the bulky teams. He's got Defense Deoxys, Umbreon, Azumarill, Knocked Owl, Altaria, and Metacham. We've got so much bulk, double counter users, double flyers, plus Azumarill and Umbreon as relative safe swaps. So as I look at this, one thing is... I've got three really good matchups for Lurantis. And I've got a fine matchup with Metacham. Um, Sableye is looking really not great here because I have to deal with Knocked Owl, Umbreon, and Azumarill. Plus, Altaria is not a great matchup. Gliscor is looking so so. There are no steals, so his Earthquake is never going to hit super effective. But Night Slash is very good against Defense Deoxys. I assume it's running Thunderbolt um, because most of them don't run Rock Slide because of the Steel Presence. 
And Earthquake is always good if it lands on either Azumarill or Metacham or Umbreon. So Gliscor looks like it's got some play. Azumarill looks super strong. Nothing in this really does uh, a great job against Azumarill. Defense Deoxys, Thunders without, Thunderbolts without Stab are hurtful, but not crippling. The Azumarill Mirror is never fun, but it's okay. And then Altaria also looks really good in this matchup, as long as I can uh, avoid Azumarill. So those are my thoughts going into this match. So I lead Lurantis hoping to catch a good lead. Deoxys, Umbreon, Azumarill. Nope, it's a knockdown. Worst lead possible for me. I swap into my safe swap Azumarill. He brings in Deoxys, which is a great counter to me. I can put a lot of damage on him with Play Rough, but he's got Thunderbolt and he doesn't take super effective from anything I'm throwing. Um, so it's a very good matchup for him to counter swap in and keeps his Noctowl nice and healthy. And now I'm in a trouble because all I've got is Altaria and Lorantis in the back. And Altaria can handle Noctowl well enough, but I have to make sure that I don't get Lorantis lined up against it. So I try and quick swap in. He quick swaps back to Noctowl. And at least at this stage of the game, I've got a good matchup here. Um, Noctowl versus Altaria in an even shield matchup is an okay place. Even if I lose, I can get some extra farm on Azumarill coming back in. Um, so I feel very confident in this. I want to make sure um, that I keep my lead, though. So I shield Altaria to try and get the farm down. I miscount my moves so I don't throw. I get hit with a sky attack here, and I uh, hit CMP there, which is why I've wasted all this energy, meaning that saving the lead is okay, but it's not great. We have more energy on... Defense Deoxys, he's going to throw a Psycho Boost and swap out, and Psycho Boost, as you can see, does a lot of damage to me. Um, Umbreon comes in, which is good, because I've got a lot of great moves, but he's just so bulky that I'm in danger here. Um, he doesn't shield the superpower, but I throw my Play Rough, he shields that, and now he's going to get to get a lot of energy against me. Um, he's going to over get a farm energy, and Lorantis without shields is just rough. Uh, so I'm not pro I don't think I'm going to live here. The last resort hits hard and kills the Lurantis. So he wins game one. So I'm on the back foot for the finals. I have to win the next two games. Um, my guess to hard lead Lurantis didn't work out for me. So I'm going to default, play a little bit safer, play a stronger, less walled lead and go from there. Since he doesn't have a steel type, I feel more confident leading Altaria. So I Altaria into Defense Deoxys. We're neutral for non-stab Thunderbolt, so I like this matchup. Altaria is fine in this. Um, I don't need to shield... Th I think it takes three Thunderbolts to KO me. Um, so I feel very confident. Um, I go up for the Moon Blast and throw it. He swaps in Noctowl to catch it, which is fine, because then I can bring in Azumarill, and now I know I can get a bunch of energy on my Azumarill. So even if I have a Deoxys come back in, I will still get to get damage in him. Uh, I'm going to overcharge and then not let him get to another wing attack because I don't want the Azumarill too low so that I can force it. He shields, that's fine. Now I can shield and maintain shield parity because I like this matchup. So I'm going to overcharge yet again and then get to my Ice Beam. Defense Deoxys is going to come back in. He's trying to get to a Thunderbolt, so I switch into Gliscor because I was trying to catch the Thunderbolt. He brings in Umbreon instead, so I don't get the Thunderbolt. He's got energy on it. I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, but Gliscor against Umbreon, I just go straight Earthquake. Uh, anything that lands is really going to help chip him down, and Azumarill can almost undoubtedly finish off Umbreon. These foul plays, you can take three of them. So I get up to double Earthquake to either force the shield or, I think, win the match, basically. He doesn't shield, so he's got a low health Deoxys, and it counters resisted because I'm flying type. So I get up to the Night Slash, throw the Night Slash to force the shield, and now it's Altaria with a shield against Defense Deoxys, plus a health Umbre or Azumarill in the back. So I'm safely won this match. Uh, even though he gets up, he's going to throw a Psycho Boost here, or he gets to a Thunderbolt even, um, but it's just not enough. And then just to make sure I seal the deal, I throw that Sky Attack to really punch the 1 HP Defense Deoxys down. Now, we're going into Game 3 here, the final game of the Grand Championships. Whoever wins this, wins the tournament overall. Uh, so we're going to play this one at regular speed, so we can really just go in-depth with what we're thinking here. I liked my plan in this game, but I assume he's going to pivot um, to try and match my Altaria lead. I also know that he's run Umbreon every single game. So I'm going to try and make the hard read here of a Umbreon in the back and bring my Metacham is my plan to handle this game. 
as I try and see how it plays out. He likes Defense Deoxys, he likes Azumarill, he likes Umbreon, he likes Noctowl. So I'm paying more attention to those. I lead Azumarill because everyone suspects it's a safe swap. So they don't expect it. Altaria lead for me, this is amazing. Um, Azumarill loves Altaria lead. There's just nothing he can do here um, to really seriously hurt my Azumarill. Uh, so I just farm up energy. He swaps in his Azumarill to catch my Ice Beam, which is wasted energy on my part. A little bit frustrating, but it's manageable. I'll stay in the mirror. Um, Altaria with damage on it means that I will outpace it with my Altaria on Dragon Breath damage now. So I have a one energy advantage on the Azumarill. I trust my IV distribution to win CMP ties. And I know that my Altaria can beat his Altaria because of the HP lead I've got on it. So that's my game plan now. And I still have this Metacham, which I assume and really hope is going to answer Umbre on the back. Because if it's Knocked Owl, I'm in a real bad spot here. Um, if it's Defense Deoxys, Metacham can actually beat it. Um, so that's my thinking here. I'll play out the Azumarill Mirror. I will assume an Umbreon in the back. And I know that Altaria versus Altaria, I can win. So since I'm winning all of these CMP, I'm very comfortable in this. If he tries to cleverly swap in and catch something, I could be in a little bit of trouble. Um, but... If he brings in the Umbreon, that's fine, because I'm still going to win it uh, when I swap in Metacham. So losing the energy, I'm not worth risking. I throw the Ice Beam, thinking it will KO him here. Um, he lives on 1 HP, because that's what Azumarill does. But I'm confident that if I didn't KO him, he won't KO me here. So I also don't shield what has to be an Ice Beam. Um, and as you can see, I've got even more. I've got 3 HP, really flexing that Azumarill. But I've won the lead. Altaria comes in now. And so I know that my Altaria will outpace this because he's got damage and I don't. So my goal here is as long as they're paired, I'm just going to equal shields to his. He throws the Dazzling Gleam here, which if it got a defense drop would have also cost me the game. But it also means that I'm ahead on energy now because I only need to throw a Sky Attack. He catches the Sky Attack, great play on the Umbreon who can soak it. But I correctly predicted the Umbreon, which means I know that the victory is mine. Um, I bring in my Metacham, I don't shield anything, and I just power up Punch. Because all I need is chip damage on Altaria, so that I can outpace it with fast moves versus my Altaria. And one shield. I, he just can't have enough health to get to two charge moves. That's my entire game plan. Um, I'm not worried about shields, this is all fast move damage now, is my plan to win this match. So he's throwing the last resorts, he's getting in that chip damage, um, because Metacham is just bulky, 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 bulky. So I'm saving up energy now, because I know I don't need it. I don't want him to get a lot of farm on my Metacham. And I want to be able to throw the Psychic in case I get the defense drop on Altaria. He's going to shield it, and that's fine. But if I get the defense drop, it's going to make this super easy for me. So I throw the Psychic, he shields... Um, it also buys time for the timer to get back up. I swap in, no defense drop, but look at this health difference. I shield this, and I Dragon Breath before he gets to the next charge move. At this stage, I know the victory is in my hands. No reason to throw a charge move, just going to fast move him down, because I have that little bit of advantage from Azumarill. And I played out the mirror instead of counter swapping in. And that is how we successfully went undefeated in this tournament. It was a ton of fun. We had so many people there this time. It was The energy was so much fun. Um, so hopefully this will encourage uh, many of you all in the local area to come out next time and for the rest of you all to keep watching these great videos. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I hope to see you all around.